What's up fellas? I'm coupelling some anode sludge today for basil and what we see here on top of the lead bead is something called lethargic. I'm not sure how to pronounce that but it basically carries away all the base metals and oxides. We got two pieces of metal here. One's 3.1 grams and this one's 0.9 so we're right at 4 grams of metal there. Okay so I got the coupel set up outside here. We have a draft heading in this direction through this breezeway so that ought to give us some pretty good cover I am going to be wearing a respirator we're going to try this oxyhydrogen torch for the cupelling process for the simple fact it has the ability to add a lot of oxygen to the lead um, hopefully expediting the process oxygen gas is very expensive stuff but if you can make it yourself it's very cheap so we have a massive 81 plate electrolyzer down here because these end plates are stainless steel, we have massive copper bus bars traveling down both ends to evenly distribute the current to avoid overheating from localization. It's going to turn water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. And we are going to cupel this anode material to see if we get any gold out of it. The gas will be infused with some propane. If we go with just straight oxyhydrogen, it will literally destroy everything. It causes some pretty serious problems. So we want a little bit of gas in there, but we are going to be running an oxidizing flame. This rotometer is wrong. It's made for air, so it's probably double the output we're seeing there. There's the foam we gotta handle. That's what those large tanks are there for. It kinda helps give that time. I noticed that if you heat it up real hot and then let it cool down for a minute, you get a real thick lethargic layer on top of the lid. And it kind of expedites the process. So I've been getting it hot and then letting it cool off and then reliquifying that slag. And when that slag reliquifies, it's soaked up into that cupel. It, it kind of draws it kind of the way capillary action works. It, it wicks it away is a very good way of looking at it. So getting it real hot and then letting it cool off like that every couple of seconds gives me a real good thick layer to work with. Here you can actually see as the oxygen hits it, it, it slows down, falls off the top of the bead and it's soaked up into the capel. Okay, so the downside to adding too much lead is that it takes way too long. Now I don't know what metal that is. It may be palladium with some silver. It has a very high melting point. It's certainly not gold, but it does have a very high melting point. You can see some other little beads of metal in there, maybe. Hard to tell if that's lethargic or what that is. Looks like maybe some micro beads of uh, precious metal. We normalized at 52 Celsius. This thing ran for about an hour. As we can see, it is being attacked by the nitric acid solution. We are seeing some green color. Okay, so here it is like maybe a half hour later definitely got some green going on so as far as I know that's a good indicator for nickel 
I could be wrong. Basil, I'm hoping you you tell me this is platinum or something, but I, I don't think it is. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna let it dissolve all the way and see what's left. Okay, Basil, this is some more anode mud that I am decanting. We're gonna give this a go and see what we get out of it. Looks like two different distinctive layers here, but uh, hoping to see some gold in this. This material here is the material that was left over from the initial anode mud leach that we did. When I leached the anode mud for the first time, a bunch of material immediately fell to the bottom of the beaker. But we were left with this other material that um, had a very high residence time. And I immediately separated the very dense heavy material from the secondary material. And that was what we melted, that's what we cupelled, that's what we made the anode out of for the gold cell and everything. This material here is what I presumed was probably a fairly low yield material, but we're going to find out. Perhaps it could contain all the gold. I, uh, I don't know the answer to that yet. But we are almost done decanting this. I'm going to take this water out, put this in a different container, and dry it. Okay, so it's been quite some time. I added some more water and some more acid and all that, and it appears the reactivity has stopped. So, either a passivation layer has formed and it has stopped dissolving, or what we are left with is precious metal. Now, I may consider cupelling this again I have seen people do that. They'll cupel it a second time and get even more material out. This is dilute so, or nitric acid, by the way. They say that uh, the pure stuff doesn't work so well because it forms a passivation layer. I may have too rich of a solution. I had some good bubbles going at one point, but they have stopped, so I don't know. Not a very shiny piece of metal, though. So, I think I might take it out and uh, try heating it up in some flux. Maybe that leached all the um, nickel out of it. We'll come back to this. This could take forever to dissolve, and I really don't want to boil this right now. I guess the point to take away here is that from a hundred grams of anode sludge we cannot expect to get a gram of precious metal. It's mostly copper and nickel and lead and uh, tin that we're going to get out of there. Probably more tin than lead. There's not a whole lot of lead in circuitry these days. But um, yeah, I think maybe uh, that's pretty much what I'm, I'm looking at here. I was thinking with 100 grams, we were going to get like uh, 40 grams of metal or something like that out of that anode sludge. I, I had no idea the yield would be so, so low. So I'm very disappointed. It turns out that the, uh, the anode mud just doesn't have as much metal as we thought. So anyway... These are some anodes that I poured today. They're going to go undergo electrolysis to remove the copper to produce more anode sludge. I'm going to cut this one and use it in a very special cell I'm going to build inside of an ultrasonic cleaning bath to uh, mitigate the anode passivation. And I'm going to try and run it at energy densities beyond anything anyone's ran at before. This one here, we're just gonna run like everyone else does.